sneaking into the original Junon, saw, saw players partake in the unique mini games. We saw the parade and many other mini games in the new real, real trailer, so we see the same mini games from the original playable. Yes, I mean, yeah. Obviously, yes, some mini games will be playable, but we've greatly increased the scope of what was in the original seven. In the original, Cloud sneaks into one of the units and a participating parade and joins in the performance. But in Rebirth, he becomes the leader of that the unit. The leader. Customize the composition of the soldiers in the parade. The chosen unit composition will alter the performance, and it also goes without saying that also affects how the mini game is played. <laughs> so we can have Cloud f uh, screw up the parade and making them be put into more troubles. <laughs> well, that means there are more bones to be lost if. Cloud doesn't give a good parade in the inauguration inauguration uh, ceremony of the new Shinra president. <laughs> if you perform poorly, does that trigger a boss fight? That'd be pretty cool. Pretty fun. <laughs> Spoilers! Spoilers! The parade to celebrate the inauguration of Rufus and the new president of Shinra is the climax of the first half of the original... Oh, they tell you! They tell you where the first half of the... Oh, wait, hold on. The parade celebrates the inauguration of Rufus as new president of Shinra is the climax of the original game. Climax of the first half of the original game. So this is the middle point of the second game of of three discs. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So the development of the team was really enthused about making all the details for it. It's one of the moments I hope players enjoy the most. Yeah, it looks epic as shit. Junon is a big is a big moment, right? It's a big it's a big moment. Okay, because there was also a cloaked figure that had like a dirty blonde blonde beard and mustache that looked like Glenn from Ever Crisis. So if they incorporate Crisis, wait, hold on. They so they said, wait, hold on. Uh. There are characters who are accompanying who are accompanying members. So, if they incorporate characters from Ever Crisis and Crisis Core into this game, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, Fort Condor. No mention of Fort Condor anywhere. Not quite no yet. Fort Condoring. And speaking of mini games, uh, we got a fun glimpse of the Golden Saucer. Do you? How do FF7 reversions uh, differ? I mean, they're all there. There might. There might well be players who get so caught up in all the fun mini games that they find they aren't making any progress in the main story. You got to be careful about gambling. I think there's a lot of fans who point to the number and variety of mini games as one of the draws of the original Final Fantasy VII. The man gets it. He gets it. He gets it. This guy gets it. Uh I I hope I enjoy the mini games because I don't remember. Dive, diving into all the mini games in the original remake. I don't know. Uh, but for Re, uh, we have gone all out and created a huge number of mini games on a scale that surpasses even the original. Many of these mini games can be experienced in the main story, but we also have lots of unique and challenging ones that appear as part of the side stories you can find as you explore the world map. Is there's that there's that phrase again explore the world map side stories oh my god so much more content you can find as you explore the world map <laughs> so uh <laughs> oh my god gives us a reason to never leave midgard i want to not leave midgard man it's so fun yeah, so we, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Hamaguchi. Uh, we, we know that people love mini games in the original Final Fantasy VII, so we just did all those. Uh, we did all those and made them look uh, bigger and crazier than ever before. Also, we made a whole bunch of new ones and made them side quests. That made them side, side quests. quests made them why? Functional. Why? In I, I, they get it. Like I don't even that that just literally reading that. Honestly, like, wells my eyes with tears. It makes you live get in the world even How further. Do you get it so. He's gonna we cry. Have lots of unique mini games and challenges that appear as part of the side stories you can find as you explore the world map. Side stories comes across as that th these were 
uh, things that you don't have to do. These are just like extra things that we've put throughout our world to expand it. Like, holy shit, man. There might be players who will get caught up in all the fun mini games that they find that they aren't making progress in the main story. Guy gets it. Uh, it's just a part of FF7. Right? This is why so many people have good impressions of Final Fantasy VII. This is why it's kind of like a landmark game, because people, the way you play through FF7 is, is a lot different from person to person. Where you spent your time and how you did your adventure was so, like, it, it happened at the same point for many people, but, but that is, like, the point, is that how you wanted to go about the world and enjoy it happens at certain points of the, the game. And people just around yeah i'm gonna go around see what the heck you can do so for them to, to realize that like yeah like the way where's my water sorry i gotta figure out where my water is i'm thirsty but like it's crazy because for me i never had the really i never had the experience recently of just like staying in the in the game long enough to complete all the side uh mini games even when playing horizon i didn't Stay long enough to learn the new the new mini game that was incorporated, because I was like so invested in one being being in the world. For, I feel like the side games are warranted if I feel the story gives me urgency to to stay a bit longer to like love the world a bit longer. I might go back and play some games again to like to really explore it. Who knows? Sorry, that was some tasty water. We need to recreate the feeling that people had with the OG FF7 of, I'm gonna go in the world and fuck around. Like, that is, that's, the, yeah, that was the point of it, right? That was, that's why FF7 is great, is that, yeah, I get it. There's a giant meteor in the sky, and, you know, there is currently a huge robot on its way to Midgar to crush the shit out of it. But more importantly, I am waiting for my chickens to fuck to get a green one. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I gotta go. Because that was important, though, because he's stressing the fact that the breeding, the breeding of chocobos personalized what potential chocobo you could have gotten. There's some skills that that chocobo may or may not get, and there's a certain roulette of what colors you may have. So if you want a full fleet of burning red chocobos and being, and you want to be called uh, the red comet, the red meteor comet, the red comet of combat, then you can do that with the red chocobo charging forward. Oh. But, like, it's hard to say, like, it, you don't know. Go race it for another couple hours to make it have more... <laughs> to make it be more enthusiastic about the <laughs> thing. I gotta go to an island and kill some things to feed it so that the chickens will <laughs> And if I don't do that, they just won't, okay? So give me a chance. Oh, I gotta go snowboarding. <laughs> Let me go snowboarding because I gotta get my GP to go ride the roller coaster to get the reward of the the thing to feed my chickens. The monster still is- <laughs> the, the, the care of- The care of these chickens is so great. Uh, there is already a game for- for racing chickens and already like this is just a glimpse of it Checking midgar chill bro i'm work okay so now i'm gonna go get some more enemy skills because that's good to help with the anyway, combat there was always so many things to do in the world of ff7 that was fun right it was fun i'm busy you fix it go shoot it with the big gun golden saucer is another you have you have a flashy gun that was cut up at sephiroth but this gun you can use it to defend yourself while I'm trying to raise my chicken. These are my babies. I am teaching them new skills. You can take care of that big robot, but I need to love my chickens because they're my children. Iconic battle that will be eager to visit. Now you have approached redesigning this amusement park. All right. It feels like Hamaguchi's getting all the gameplay stuff, which is great. Players will be able to visit the Golden Saucer in the middle section of the game. Um, And again, I'm sure that he, there's a love for this part of the game i'm not particularly invested in mini games quite yet but let's hear what he has free to, say. to come back to it at any time they like at any time to create that motivation to make them want to come back we designed a park to provide a changing and ever more wonderful experience with each visit so new mini games are added harder difficulty modes are unlocked as the main story progresses giving you even more to do there I need there to be a shady GP drug dealer. Come on, please. 
they're gonna do it. I know they're gonna do it. There's gonna be some guy in the, in the background, and you get off, you get off like the the cart, and he's like, "Hey kid," he's like smoking and shit. Hey, you want some GP? And he's got some like fake ass money, and you like, you got <laughs> and you gotta go to him, and he's like in a shadow. He's like, hey, he's like a drug dealer, and he gives you like the fake money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes he's not there. This is ridiculous, like, go? Max. And you gotta like hunt him down. What you buying? <laughs> yes. What are you That's selling? What, what are you buying? <laughs> it's not just the mini games either, and the parts of the gold saucer oh my and God. the scene in the main story have also been fully remade and upgraded too. So you can expect great things. God damn, uh, they they they. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even know what to say. I feel like I have to pr provide explanation of why I sound like a crazy person constantly when describing FF7. I have to describe, I have to give explanation for please, these things. But at please. this point, I don't think I need to do anything. I, I think I've done enough. The trailer also shows moments of the party exploring the lush exterior. How do those large areas work within the context of gameplay? Oh my God, Hamaguchi. Just f my brain right now. <laughs> Once the team leaves <laughs> Midgar, Cloud and the team's major objective in Rebirth is to follow and track Sephiroth across the expansive world they find themselves in. We put a lot of emphasis on exploration-focused game design. With this title, as we wanted to create a feeling of going on a journey while traveling around the world in pursuit of the evidence of Sephiroth movements. So, it's going to be an even better version. So, are you telling me that this is going to be an even better version of Final Fantasy XV and I enjoy XV as it was? I'm going to be... I'm, I'm invested. Okay. So that's just accompanying all the stuff that they have been saying before. It and there's a casino to where if you are out of money, you go and you get into debt to get more money. Is that, yes, we want to create a game of exploration. We want to create the same feeling that you had when you left Midgar in the OG7 is that you are now on an adventure. And you need to be able to run around and explore the world in that adventure. So now you're several years into remaking the iconic locations, and with FF7 Remake being so successful, do you feel less pressure to match fan expectations when reimagining beloved areas and moments? I would expect they feel more. So Hamaguchi, again, gameplay guy. Um, Rebirth will take players to various locations across the world, so we, re we needed to recreate the massive world map that would also incorporate places such as towns, dungeons within itself. Dungeons that, within we dug itself. deeply into the feeling of each different region and reflected that in the graphics, creating areas that look and feel quite diversive. On top of that, we designed chocobos unique to each region. Each and region. They have their own abilities. Oh my god, he's confirming it. Mountain chocobos can climb up cliffs. Sky chocobos can fly. Oh. <laughs> so players will need to utilize their chocobos, chocobos to fully explore. Oh. <laughs> oh, players will have a lot of fun with this app. Oh. <laughs> Max has to calm down his bones. We are clearly aware that he has a bone. He has a bag full of bones, and it's all for this game. Just say everything perfectly. Granted, no breeding. No chocobo. Nah. There's chocobos in each area that you need to get, but no chocobo breeding. Maybe not. But maybe to get the later good ones, maybe that's safe for either part three? I don't know. They are making chocobos an integral part of the game design and the exploration of the game, mm -hmm. clearly. We design chocobos unique for every region to have their own abilities, like climbing and flying, so that players can utilize those f***ing chickens to explore every <laughs> area and have a lot of fun with this aspect. It's gonna be fun, yeah. Okay, calm down, Luffy. It's quite cartoonish already as it is with how he's in Maybe feeling. they took out Chocobo breeding. Maybe not. We don't know. Yeah, we don't it's, know yet. What's weird is that, do we have fond memories of Chocobo breeding, or was it kind of grindy? I think it was... I think it's funny. I think there. I think it definitely needs to be there in some way. It does not need to be the exact same way as it was before. It does not need to have... Because what was the grindy part about Chocobo breeding? It was the racing chat. It was mm -hmm. the fact that you literally had to grind your chicken uh, as their face against the walls <laughs> of the racing courses while glitching out the stamina gauge of chocobo races you literally grinded their faces against the walls i'm not even being metaphorical there as you zipped across the entire match to beat <laughs> dio eventually if that wasn't <laughs> because like, I, it sounds like by grinding your the face against the wall it's a glitch to 
quickly like finish races so that you can get rewards that were gonna help with the breeding and the item getting a part of it then that's fine who knows like maybe you actually have like some sort of stat modified to your chocobo where you just build like a relationship with them or some way right maybe they level up in some way so that could be way better instead of having to do specifically just that thing and the whole bunch of the, maybe there's, there's probably a lot more stuff that they can do in terms of making making the, the chocobo breeding stuff more interesting mm -hmm. this paragraph is orgasmic i can't even seven remake offered new interpretations of classic locations and moments as well as entirely new ones that that enriched the game is there a similar balance for FF7 Rebirth? Katase says, as with the previous game, we have strived for the right balance between old and new scenes in 7 Rebirth, but we also tried to take on more new challenges than we did uh, with 7 Remake, with some of the new scenes. I am confident these new scenes will be wildly enjoyed for fans and newcomers alike. Yeah. What is the function of the... Oh, dude. Are you the function of here? the world map. What is the function of the world map in Rebirth? And Hamaguchi is... Okay, here we go. Get ready. Hold on. Hold on. So the world map is vast and expansive. So not all of the locations on it will be used in main story alone. In fact, volume-wise... Volume-wise, the amount of side quests... The amount of content or side content in Rebirth is nearly double that the main quest offers... Players who want to enjoy FF7's setting on an even deeper level can explore all the corners of the world, discovering many different and exciting experiences such as new stories, battles, and minigames. It will also be possible to return to any of the regions in the world even after the main quest moves on from that area, so you don't have to worry about leaving things behind or unfinished. Oh. That was the thing, that was the problem, that was a quirk of Remake where... Either you had to do all the side quests right then and there, and it it made sense about it, but like you either had to do all the side quests possible before moving on, and even if and you have to include the odd optional side quests, otherwise after the plate seven dropped, you would never ha have access to those missions again. There are there were certain missions that you were required to do. And then there's certain missions that were available that you had to not miss because of story-related incidences like plate dropping in the area. So missions, some missions in 7 weren't usable because of that chaos. Oh my god. So you're just saying we can fast travel back most likely. Mm -hmm. what fast travel will help. Is, is a problem that is presented in the OG game. And it's pretty much Fort Condor. Where Fort Fort Condor side quest is a thing that you have to engage with at certain points of the game and go back to and make sure it continues like appropriately, I, th I think, right? So that, that was kind of cumbersome that you didn't have an airship and you had to cross the ocean all these times mm -hmm. and it was kind of like... Ugh. All the time. It was kind of like a pain in the ass. So, so if you could just like zip back to an area that was across the entire friggin' ocean just to be like okay yeah let's let's check out what's going on here again and now i have new means to travel about this area because i have new chickens i got a buggy or whatever that that's fun right so they're not going to lock the zones or anything yeah fort condor was exhausting it i, I think it's it, it is one of the best rewards in the game granted its reward is easily one of the most op things in ff7 so you kind of have to do it if you want to take on big bosses mm -hmm. but ultimately it's not super fun and the, the the mini game itself isn't great, you know. You detest Fort Condor. It's not. It, it is easily one of the weakest mini games in the whole game. But still, you know, we found ways around it. You can just like skip it and let the fight happen at the top, and you can just cheese it now. That's wild that there's that much side quest content. Just gonna throw it out there. That immediately doesn't trigger a like uh, like a huge guttural reaction because. We just experienced another Square Enix game that had a, a ton of side quest content and a, a small portion of it was actually like worth it and like good. So uh, my immediate impression is like, okay, so we're just going to get to a town, talk to a person, run around, talk to the person again, run back, talk to the first. Yeah, because there was a lot of fetch questing side quests that were the issue. It was a huge, it was a big problem with, with questing. 
but like it, it it was rewarding you got rewards that helped you better improve the game and it was in the in even in the finale even even after all the side questings the game was still difficult against Sephiroth so we're hoping well what I'm hoping is that it's less what we get we get less fetch quests because that was a that was a a tactic to pad the game and for it to be a hundred hours it shouldn't be with padding unless it had to like the first game the first game you had to figure out how to pad a five hour experience and this time you don't need to there's two games to make side quests short simple move on this person and then that's done like and it needs to be more engaging than that so ultimately ff7 remake did have some side content that was pretty good the original ff7 did or seven remake sorry but not all of it was like premium and not all the areas in seven remake were premium so ultimately it it feels like yeah if this is more yakuza like if this is more like witcher like where the side content is a premium, they seem to be already confident enough to create side content that's missable. We're gonna create mini games for our optional, potentially optional side content that's missable. So you, you, we're gonna spend time on this shit and have you not be able to do it. So that's, that's an important stance to take already. That yeah, you need to, you're gonna need to create things that we can go into the world and not engage with it at all. And, and you don't have spend to spend development time on that shit, and that is going to be a part of the game. Because guess what? That's a part of the original Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII is a game where you do not have to engage with a lot of side content, but it was genuinely great and it was really fun. But having that shit there is a is important, right? You need to mm -hmm. realize that you're going to be wasting development time and resources on shit that people could miss. That is an important part of the game, though. And okay. They have said that before. They said that yeah, we're, we're creating literally mini games for side content potentially things that are optional oh, what can you tell us about the soundtrack oh god i'm assuming that we're <coughs> going to get a lot of reused tracks from uh ff7r because they just went yeah like in in regards to whether or not they're gonna transform or incorporate new and old music there's gonna be a lot of reuse because again it's in the same world but i can see where they're gonna transform the music when we change different regions, because each region will have its uniqueness. So the fans and the creators will want to make sure that the music stays unique per area. So ham on the music, dude. They went so ham. Yeah. The world of Rebirth is much larger than Remake, so because of this, the team has created a variety of new music to go alongside that. We also expanded the variety of musical genres this time around. Genres? There was already a ton of genres. Did I miss one? Did you? Wait. Uh, I'll go back in a second. Wait, what do we well, miss? Give them the... plenty to enjoy. Okay. Can players port over their save files and their character builds? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so the question is, given, the, given this is a direct uh, continuation of Final Fantasy VII Remake, can players port over their save files and their character builds to continue their journey into Final Fantasy Rebirth? I, I don't... I... It says, yeah, it's a standalone game, so without without getting a chance to really answer the question, I feel like it doesn't, because each game is going to be its own standalone game, each game will have its own library of weapons, so to speak. So, Rebirth will have weapons that you won't see, like in Midgard, because by then, the, character, the progression is that as you're getting stronger, you're going to have different tools for different situations. So the weapons you received in Remake were the weapons appropriate for that time. And to go into this second game, there, there's going to be a plethora of weapons you've never seen before. So that's going. I feel like that will match the energy of the new area as well. But uh, it says will be a trilogy. Each injury of his own. Standalone. Each game's balancing is done independently. And the levels and the bows will not carry over. Created some special bonuses, who, but you'll get a bonus for. Fa there are bonuses for fans who've played the previous game, allowing them to start with a little something extra. Okay, so you get a treat, so you will not get penalized for playing the previous game. 
but you will get a you'll rather but you'll get a bonus rather in the event that it happens so i can see that of course we have many rearrangements of classic tracks from the original seven so i hope fans will be enjoying comparing the both iterations from the same song to see what's changed for example the music in the newly released trailer is a rearrangement of the final fantasy 7 main theme oh i noticed as a battle music track to give you a taste of the direction i freaking noticed man I was like, dude, is this the is this the world theme? Like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. uh, I loved it. I loved it. Okay, not worried about the music. If there's one thing I ain't worried about is the music for FF7 remake games. So Amaguchi said, given this direction, um, the continuation of FF7 remake, and players port over their save file and their character builds to continue their journey. Damn, this is a great question i'm assuming no we have announced that remake project will be a trilogy and that each entry will be a standalone game because of this each game's balancing is done independently and the player's levels and abilities will not carry over to the next however we have created special bonuses for fans who played the previous allowing them to start with a little something extra okay so i think I I, that, this yeah. was talked about before right You're, it's a continued story it's a continued three-part narrative but every game is different they are this isn't a this isn't a dot hack game, right? Where you, we're literally making the same game. It's just longer, and your save data. Oh, continues. I do see what they're talking about now. When they bring up dot hack, dot hack is the same idea where you can you can start off with each dot hack game. You can start the second and third volume with a preset loadout, right? But if you were to play the previous games. You carry over what level you're at. You carry over the weapons and weapon trees and skills you've obtained. If that makes sense. So, in terms, so uh, in terms of like allowing them to start with a little extra, does that mean I have to? Well, I don't have PlayStation Five yet, so that would mean I would have to reap if it was going to follow the same train of thought dot hacked it that means i would have to recomplete the game if it means i want to make sure that i have all the skills from remake i want imported into rebirth and then that would be the same case if all the skills i i get in rebirth i want to travel into revelations because that's i feel like the third title will be called revelations and that's where the title i feel like the naming convention will go that makes sense and when he brings up dot hack i i see the question that concerns right now news it's not that every game is going to be vastly different from one to the next you're not starting at level 50 or anything like that probably not i think all of your damage is going to get reset the balancing of the games are going to get reset you know this is it's different than that let me know what you guys think thank you guys so much for watching and uh raise your flags